delighted as Head of Department to welcome you here uh, today. Uh, my name is Jeremy Horder. Uh, it's my great pleasure and privilege to work with uh, some outstanding people in our uh, tax uh, division within the department. Uh, Eduardo here and Ian of course and, and others. Tax is a growth area really for us uh, in intellectual terms in this department. Uh, it has always had a, a, a thriving history. Uh, more courses are coming on stream more students are becoming interested in this general area as it intersects um, uh, with EU law, international law, uh, and uh, in so many other ways provides an interesting, uh, fascinating theoretical foundation for our students' studies. But in particular, of course, here tonight, um, we are here to celebrate the publication of this uh, wonderful new book, which builds on uh, the work done by Ian and Eduardo in 2012, uh, resolving trans transfer pricing disputes, uh, which I know many of you hear uh, the book, you will know of that book and you will have enjoyed reading that. Um, but this is uh, in many ways a much more ambitious um, uh, undertaking, and I say that not in any way meaning to undermine the importance of the previous work, but th this is a, a much more uh, ambitious uh, work in theoretical <laughs> terms and in, and in comparative terms. Um, and of course, um, for me as a mere criminal lawyer, uh, it can sometimes seem as if uh, uh, tax disputes are very uh, sort of technical matters involving the deployment of the finest minds, uh, poring over the uh, interstices of uh, uh, statutory provisions sometimes laid down uh, uh, long ago. Um, but of course, actually, in many ways, as I, as I uh, began to read through uh, uh, Eduardo's introduction, which I think is, is, is pitched um, at the level that even someone I, uh, such as myself is capable of grasping, uh, it, it did actually uh, make me realise how much of importance there is actually to general uh, legal theory, to jurisprudence, and to political and international theory about what is going on in relation to tax disputes. And in particular, of course, the extent to which uh, private parties should be allowed to make their own arrangements under international law, uh, uh, immune to some extent at least from the intervention of national or international bodies. Um, in my own area or areas of, of, of research, for example, in relation to bribery, corruption and the arms trade, there's a well-known uh, issue uh, in which um, the question is to what extent can one party who makes a perfectly valid agreement to export arms to another country which is not regarded by this country as an unsafe country, to what extent can the government intervene in that perfectly legal private arrangement if in fact it is known to one or both of the parties that when the arms are exported to that um, quote unquote safe country they will then immediately be sold on or moved to an unsafe country. Um, now, to what extent is the government entitled to intervene in such circumstances? Now, of course, that's a world away, perhaps, uh, from questions um, such as the one which Eduardo raises in the, at the very beginning, a fascinating question about, when, uh, about what should happen when one country is used as an investment vehicle, in fact, to invest in another country, where the purpose um, is not necessarily, uh, or indeed at all, uh, to benefit the country in which the money is being invested, uh, but is merely to take advantage of the tax advantages uh, of investing um, in the end user country, as I would have it in arms control terminology, uh, rather than the intermediary company. And um, I think that it raises all sorts of questions, not only about, of course, the legitimacy of the intervention of um, uh, governments, but also, of course, the, the, the approach of the courts. Uh, uh, we're all um, very familiar with the various attempts that there have been in this country to uh, 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 pull between, on the one hand, the literal reading of statutes, on the other hand, the purposive uh, reading of statutes, and that, of course, crops up, uh, as Eduardo rightly points out, and, and the chapter indeed on English law points out, in relation to the Pirelli uh, uh, litigation uh, in this country. Uh, where the court was confronted with the issue of whether it should adopt a purposive interpretation of a statute. So uh, I think there, there is a great deal that I think is of, uh, of general political and jurisprudential significance. And nowhere really is there a better place to draw that out in, in educational, intellectual terms than at this university and this department, I would say. 
And it's a great tribute, I think, to the work that Ian and Eduardo are doing. Um, and I'd also like to make a special mention of Andy Summers here, who's developing a new course in taxation. And I think that the environment here um, uh, is conducive to that kind of intellectual endeavor. And we wish him all the best. Uh, but we also, in particular, of course, wish all the best to the, uh, uh, Eduardo, and thanks for all the work that he's done. We wish you, uh, the, those who supported him uh, in all of this and who've contributed to this work, uh, we thank you very much indeed. And we know that this will be a major milestone in uh, the publication uh, uh, reputation of this department. Um, and so thank you uh, particularly to Eduardo, and of course I know that Ian has offered so much support uh, over such a long period of time, and we're, and we're very grateful for that. So thank you. I will now um, uh, step back. I have, uh, uh, as, as someone with no expertise, I have uh, nothing more to contribute, but I, 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 I am extremely grateful as head of the department for all the work that's gone on, and congratulations to you once again, and thank you all very much for coming. Please do enjoy the seminar. Thank you.